Abdurazak in Gutier. Now, what we've just seen there is a very awesome nasheed reminding us that we have more beneficial things to do other than WhatsApp. I'm not saying that we should stop WhatsApping because you'll also find me on WhatsApp, but we've got to remember that this is a month where we're supposed to always perform the taraweh and always make sure that we go closer to Allah because one of the definitions of the word Islam is huwa al-istislamu lillahi bit-tawhid wal inqiyadu lahu bit-ta'ah wa bar'at min ash-shirk wa ahlihi which means that Islam is staying closer to Allah and going closer to him by submitting to him alone and also going closer to him through obedience and staying away from polytheism and, polytheist, and, and polytheists. Now the hadith I mentioned earlier was about Allah loving you and when he loves you he tells everyone in, in heaven and everyone in heaven once they love you the whole universe loves you. Now this is not a hadith like any other hadith we always hear about. It's hadith Qudsi, which means that it's the words of the Almighty Allah through the Prophet, peace be upon him. Now I want us to get back to this very interesting discussion with the Sheikh. Back there when we were on the break, we just mentioned these people who stopped performing their Taraway prayers. And and during, during the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan and also people leaving what they've been doing. We'll get back to, people, to that a little later, but I want us to finish first of all on, on actually we've not even mentioned the Itqumina Nar. Can mm. we just at least mention something about the Itqumina Nar? Uh, yes, you see, uh, <coughs> the first uh, division was uh, Rahma, it's called Maghfira, yeah. uh, meaning uh, mercy, then uh, forgiveness. After Allah has given you his mercy, mm -hmm or endow you his mercy, yeah. then accepted your, your forgiveness. Uh -huh. The third thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is to assure you that you'll enter paradise. And if he assure you you'll enter paradise, mm -hmm. then unfortunately uh, and uh, uh, automatically you'll not enter hellfire. Uh -huh. And you know people fear fire. Very much. Very much. Here on, on this earth, and hereafter. Yeah. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad so awesome. maybe he was supposed to say the third uh, division mm -hmm. is the one which now people enter Jannah. But people could not take it that way. Seriously. Seriously. Yeah. But when they hear now the third uh, division of uh, or part of Ramadan is to keep you far from hellfire. Mm -hmm. Now people are ready to get that uh, uh, guard from hellfire. Sorry to cut you short, but just to give the magnitude yes. of the hellfire, yes. I once heard a sheikh on radio, he yes. said that the fire that women always use to cook food is so hot. Let's ask them how hot it is. And I says, imagine that multiplied by 70 times. That's the magnitude of the... Not even 70 times, yeah. because some scholars explain that uh, the hellfire... Mm -hmm. When you are almost 70 miles, 70 miles before you reach there, yeah. you are already oh, burnt yeah. the entire body 70 yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that fire, uh -huh. and he says that waquduha nasu wal hijara. The fuel of hellfire is human beings, wal uh -huh. billah, and stones. Mm -hmm. Stones. So it's very bad fire, Allah. May Allah put it us, put us very far from that Allah fire, Allah. inshallah. And that's why it's upon me and you, mm. and all the viewers, and even those who are watching, to have to have a responsibility to go and talk to others who have not watched. Tell them, my friend, we have now the last 10 days of Ramadan, mm -hmm. which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed us that if we stand by his teachings in these 10 days and do what is supposed to be done, yeah. we will never enter hellfire. Then let them go and tell others and let me and you start doing the best from now mm -hmm. till the end of Ramadan and even after Ramadan so that we will never enter hellfire, inshallah. 
A very intriguing question comes up when yes. we talk about Itrum in Nanar or yes. being taken far away from the hellfire. What is someone supposed to do? Because we know that in the second 10 days of Maghfira mm. or Tawbah, asking for forgiveness from yes. Allah, we increase our ibadah in the form of i'tiqaf. Yes. And before that, there is so much dhikri that people do on the first 10 days of the month of Ramadan. Yes. Now, what obligation are people supposed to do in these last 10 days of Itrum in Nanar? You know, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh -huh. from the hadith of Anas bin Malik, uh, he said that uh, this month has a lot of benefits, Ramadan. Yeah. And uh, many people who will not get the benefits of Ramadan are the people who are far from the mercy of Allah. Subhanallah. He explained it that way. Uh -huh. So it means that if you are far, far from the mercy of Allah, then you are the, among those who will not get the benefits of, of, uh, of the Ramadan. 10 days. Uh, the 10 days. Uh -huh. And if, you, if that is the interpretation of the hadith, then it means that even your first 10 days, so and null and void. That's what it means. That it means. Yeah. So it means that we need to be to do the best. But uh, let us just consult our mother Aisha mm -hmm. because uh, she's the one who asked the Prophet Muhammad peace upon him. Sorry. If I want to get the words of Let what do I do? Mm -hmm. He taught her, uh, say Allahumma inna ka afuun, to afuun 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 So mm -hmm. my friend, from now up to the end of Ramadan. Let your dhikr, among the best dhikr be Allah inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fafwana Allah inna ka'afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fafwana I'm saying it this way because this is the version people know in most People exactly. from Lamu, from Garissa, Malindi, Mombasa yeah. That's the version When I say it like once they don't get it yeah. But when you say Allah inna ka'afuun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fafwana Meaning Allah, innaka, mm -hmm. you are afuun. You mm -hmm. like forgiving and wiping away sins. To uh hebul -huh. afwa, you like wiping away sins. Fa mm -hmm. anna, then forgive and wipe away our sins. Uh -huh. And we explain the difference between istighfar and and uh, tauba also and uh, uh, afu last last time. And we are repeating today. Mm -hmm. When Allah makes afu for you, it means that things you have done. He finishes them, he forgives them, he will never even mention them to you. They are forgiven, forgiven and forgotten. Forgiven, forgotten. But it's too far when you say, Safrullah, Safrullah, you have forgiven something, mm -hmm. there is a possibility of Allah SWT reminding you in the day of judgment. Uh -huh. You remember yeah, you please. stole that banana, but we forgave you. Yeah. you but Afu, when it's done, you'll never even hear about it. And that's Kings the best it. thing we're asking from Allah SWT this time. Mm -hmm. And every time, inshallah, Allah minna ka afuun. To to afwa, fa afwa mm -hmm. People add Karim. Mm -hmm. The word Karim didn't come from the Prophet Muhammad mm -hmm. But they add Karim because it's also part of the names of Allah. Mm -hmm. Karim means generous. generous. Meaning you you like wiping sins and you're also generous. Mm -hmm. Fa anna, then forgive us. Uh -huh. Yes. Now let's we've been mentioning this so many times yes. within this show. I think mm. if we count it, it might even be twenty times that we've mentioned Layla Til Qadr. Yes. Only me twenty, maybe you twenty as well. And the viewers, especially <coughs> non Muslim viewers, will wonder what exactly is Layla Til Qadr. Now to clarify it a little bit, I will say I'll start by saying that it's the night of power. Yes. The night of decree. The night where the noble Quran was What's revealed to the noble Prophet, peace be upon him. Let's I'd like you to also add more flesh into this information and perhaps even give more inf information to the viewer. Okay. The first thing is that uh, Laylatul Qadr is the best night ever in this world. Mm -hmm. With a lifetime blessing. With a lifetime blessing. Mm -hmm. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Holy Quran that if you do anything good in that night, and you know it's not the entire night, it is part of night. Mm -hmm. It is as if you have done that thing which you are doing for 83.3 years. Many people don't even live that long. Of course, many of us will never get there. Yeah. But we pray to Allah SWT to reach there with our teeth and everything intact. <laughs> you know, there's no need of you being 80, then you don't have teeth, you don't have eyes. It's a big burden because also to the community. Yeah. So we are praying to Allah SWT to reach that age, but healthy. So it's important for someone, every one of us, to do what pertains to be done. Uh -huh. And I always give people five things, my brother. Mm -hmm. One. Make sure you pray 
Isha Jama uh -huh. and mix it with Tarawi with the Imam uh -huh. at mosque. Uh -huh. Make sure you pray Tahajjud and uh, and Witr. Uh -huh. Make sure you give Swadaka. Make sure that uh, you pray Fajr on its time. Make sure you recite Quran at night and that Dua. Uh -huh. If you do those five things, my brother, Wallahi, you will get Laylatul Qadr. Uh -huh. But now here is a warning. You know, we must give a warning also. If we are talking of uh, getting thawab for 83 years, what if, you are among the people who have diseases in the hearts, you go have sex during Ramadan. I'm not talking with your wife. If you do it with your wife, you get thawab. Mm -hmm. But you see, in the Day of Judgment, you'll be told, hey, you had sex for 83 years. <laughs> Which is thawab, huh? you know, when you sleep with your wife, you get thawab. Yeah. But if you do it with the wrong person, subhanallah, uh -huh. you get sins for 83 years. It's very nasty. Wallahi, very nasty. Or, you know, there are these youth, sometimes they say during Ramadan, they want to chew some mira a little bit. Ah, me, Sheikh, let me go get something because you are wangu. Mm -hmm. My friend, the day of judgment will come and uh, when you see the, the pile of gut you have eaten, it's as if you have eaten the, the, the almost uh, 30 acres of mira of a meru. <laughs> it becomes a tragedy. Yeah. Or that day you decide to go and do anything bad. You know, there are even those who maybe say, let me go to disco. I've missed disco, man. And then you go, the day of judgment, you're told, you know, I've been going to disco for 83 years. <coughs> well, that's a big tragedy. So it's upon me, you, and everyone watching, and even those who are not watching, to do the best during the 10 days of Ramadan from, to, from today. Let's talk of today, not 10 days. Uh -huh. From today, inshallah, let us be the best Muslims, inshallah. And we continue with this spirit till we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, you've mentioned this very intriguing aspect of the Laylatul Qadr. Yes. That you, anything that you do is multiplied by 83.3 years. Now, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Mm -hmm. So, if someone commits fornication, commits zina yes. for in this night of uh, Laylatul Qadr, mm. and it's multiplied to a thousand nights, an equivalent of 83 years, mm. does that mean that by the time you go towards Allah on the Day of Judgment, does that mean that someone of that <coughs> nature will be a muflis? You know, that person will be a muflis. Uh, one thing uh, is that uh, Muslims try to play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a little bit sometimes because, uh, you know, there is that good intention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if you do uh, intention, if you have intention to do something bad and you don't do it, you don't get anything. Mm -hmm. But if you do, you make intention of doing something good and you don't get it, you get one thawab. Uh -huh. If you do it, you get 10 thawabs. So for Lalit Qadri, some scholars also argue that uh, if you do <coughs> sin, it is counted to be only one day sin. Uh -huh. But uh, many scholars, those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have asked yourself, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given you a blank check of 83 years, what do you want to write on it? What do you want to write on it? Uh -huh. Whatever you write is what you get. Mm -hmm. So that is my explanation. And that is the logic I use and the philosophy I use also. I join the scholars who say that uh, whatever you do that day mm -hmm. is what you get. Subhanallah. Yes. Now, for the purpose of those who are watching and they do not understand what the meaning of the word muflis is, I would like you to clarify it. Even also you can include the hadith where Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mentioned mm -hmm. and described exactly who a muflis is. Muflis is bankrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, in this world, <coughs> there are people who become bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Some of them do it uh, actually purposefully, uh -huh. technically. Uh -huh. Maybe they, they have divorced their wives or they have problems with the government. Uh -huh. Then they declare Here's themselves uh, bankrupt. Uh -huh. So that, uh, of course, when you become bankrupt, everyone runs away from you. Uh -huh. uh, but the day of judgment, there are people who will be muflis, uh -huh. bankrupt. Uh -huh. Because you'll come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have abuse so and so. Uh -huh. You come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have blood. Sp split blood. Mm -hmm. You come before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have stolen things from so and so. Uh -huh. Yes, you have your own thawabs because you know there are people who still they pray. <laughs> they fornicate, they pray. They try to they, equalize. They, they try to equalize. Yeah. But the problem <laughs> is that you don't know when you are trying to equalize, you don't know how the magnitude and the balance. You know you cannot balance these things. Mm -hmm. So the best way is to become the best person. Because if you do that, then in the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be seeing that so and so is going to hellfire. Mm -hmm. But you wronged him. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be doing will be taking some thawabs from you, giving and it to this person. To the other person. He enters Jannah. Mm -hmm. Another one is also going to hellfire. But you had done something wrong also, 
your rewards, your rewards are taken, taken given to this him. person. Yeah. By the time Allah SWT looks back to you, then your mizan is down, uh -huh. meaning that you're going to you can take hellfire. Fire. That is what we call Muflis. So what I'm trying to say is that Islam is a huma hu 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 humanity religion. Mm -hmm. Be good to people, uh -huh. Muslims, non-Muslims, animals, and everything, uh -huh. and you'll be the best person. But if you go wronging each other, then at night you go and pray to Allah SWT, mm -hmm. you're doing nothing. So, in a nutshell, what a muflis is, or what a bankrupt person is in Islam, is someone whose bad deeds outweigh, are, they outweigh the, good, the deeds good deeds on the mizan or the weighing scale. Yes, so, that's it. So, the bad deeds are higher than the good deeds, Thank and you. so you're a muflis. <laughs> that's why I'm happy to be with you, because you, are, you, you understand your audience better than you, mm -hmm. and that's the easiest way they can understand. Yeah. Well, you know, even when you do the hands like this, <laughs> now they understand. Yeah. Uh -huh. My way of an, or, or explanation was a little bit high in level, but thank you so much for that. That's very true. Thank you very much for that clarification, and okay. I'm sure that the viewer has also benefited from thank that. You. And uh, now, I mentioned uh, where it started, the first ayah that was revealed in the Quran that was from Surah Al Alaq, yes. where the Almighty Allah says, Read in the name of your Lord who, who created. created you. Yes. Now, when I mentioned to my non Muslim friends that the Quran was brought down to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they would ask me, was it brought down the same way that the Torah or the Torah was brought down? No. Or was it, and then I explained to them that it was brought down over a period of 23 years so. but it becomes really difficult to explain it to someone who's totally oblivious about this matter mm. how the quran we say it was brought down mm. on a particular night uh -huh. and then we say it was brought down on a 23 uh -huh. years it's it's a, kind of clarify uh, that. Let, me, let me clarify yeah you know uh quran was being revealed in portion Mm -hmm. We call it gradation. At the university, we teach students gradation. When you see gradation in course outline, uh -huh. it means the portions, the way it was revealed. Uh -huh. You know, uh, every time any uh, incident occurs, uh -huh. then a verse will be revealed for that occurrence. Uh -huh. Every time. And that's why people who have done uh, Islamic sciences, they have something we call asbabun nuzul, reasons for revelation. But now, during the end years of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Mm -hmm. Quran was uh, recited to him by Jibril al -Salam once, mm -hmm. the entire, in entirety now, from uh, uh, Fatiha uh -huh. to Nas. But in that one night? In, in that one night. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, scholars say that uh, during the year he died, it was done twice. Mm -hmm. Now, to explain to someone who don't understand so they understand better, <coughs> yeah. is that uh, you see, by the time Prophet Muhammad Sallam was dying, so, he had already covered the 23 years in his prophethood. Yeah. Because he got prophethood when he was 40. 40. Mm -hmm. And he died when he was 63. 63. So he had already finished his, his, his lifetime. Yeah. And that's why the last verse which was revealed by Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al Yawma Akmantu Lakum Dinakum Watmam tu alaikum Neamati Waraditu Lakum Islam Adina that today I have completed. I, I've completed to you your religion, you Muslims. Your religion is complete. Watmam tu alaikum Neamati and I've also perfected, perfected the bounties on you. Allah and you see the best bounty of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala is Prophet Muhammad so, so, so. and Islam itself. Yeah. And that I'm only pleased to see religion which you should follow is Islam. Uh -huh. When the Prophet Muhammad Sallam read Salam. that verse, uh -huh. people knew that this is the end of Prophet Muhammad. Uh -huh. Of course, some scholars also attribute the verse which says that uh, uh -huh. that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is uh -huh. like prophet, uh, pro other prophets who passed before him. Uh -huh. So people say that even that one was one among the last ones. Uh -huh. But what I'm trying to say is that you see now these are the last versions of Quran. Uh -huh. So when that verse came, there was no any other There was no other verse that was brought down. You get me? Uh -huh. So what happened is that Jibril now had to recite to the Prophet Muhammad Sallam the entire Quran from Surah Al-Fatiha to now these verses at the end. You get me? Yeah. But now on, on Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Qadr now, they compiled now, mm -hmm. the entire compilation now, yeah. that is when it was read upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's why we say that, that is when it was revealed in totality as a complete book. Now, uh, I read yes. uh, from back in the Madrasa mm. that the Quran on this night it was re it was revealed. It was lowered from uh, Baytul Ma'mur. 
Baitul Ma'amur mm -hmm. to is it Baitul Hayz Iza or yes yeah so so how was that is it is it that it happened all of it at the same time from Baitul Ma'amur to Baitul Iza all at the same night when it was read to the noble prophet or is there a time frame separating these two instances there was no time frame uh -huh. it was the same night that same night because uh, Muslim scholars especially the scholars of Quran believe that uh, it was uh, being uh, protected in Baitul Ma'amur. Uh -huh. Baitul Ma'amur, according to what uh, scholars explain, is that that building, mm -hmm. it is totally adjacent to Kaaba. Is it Lawh al-Mahfud? Lawh al-Mahfud, sorry, uh -huh. Lawh al-Mahfud. Uh -huh. al uh -huh. So from there, that's when it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallam in totality now, the entire Quran. So it was recited to him the entire of it. Mm -hmm. And that's why people who say that the Quran has some human element, mm -hmm. they are wrong. Mm -hmm. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, made sure that Quran does not have the human element inside because he recited it in totality to the Prophet Muhammad sure, sure. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra mm -hmm. wa inna lahu mm -hmm. That we have revealed this book and, and we are the one who will protect it. it. And that's why Quran will remain protected to the day of judgment. You cannot bring anything in the whole Quran. People have tried, but you remember, you'll never bring anything in the whole Quran, yeah. but will detect even before you, f you finish it. Just to add a little point on to what you've said, before we move forward to the next section that I want to ask you, I would say that for the purpose of benefiting the viewer, that the Lawh al Mahfud also means the protected manuscript. Oh, that's true. Literally from Arabic. I'm yeah, interested. That's like true. That. Okay, now the next thing that would like us to talk about very briefly mm. is about the mu'ajiz of the Quran. And perhaps you can also demonstrate, if you can, inshallah. Uh, the difference is because you said there is no human element yes. and for us Muslims we understand that mm. there is no human element yes. but now for the purpose of other people who are watching this show mm. uh, there is this surah surah to fill yes. where some some poets in in so in, in the times of Prophet Muhammad yes. upon him, they tried to write their own poetry That's to try true. and rival the language of the Quran That's perhaps true. you can also clarify this to us you know uh, one of the more of Quran or miracles of Quran mm -hmm is that explains things which will come, things which even appeared before Prophet Muhammad. And one of them was that surah. Prophet Muhammad Sallam, when it was revealed to him, he said to people, Li'ila fi Quraysh, or Alam Tara. Alam Tara, kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. Don't you see what Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala did to those people who came with their elephant? Uh -huh. When that incident happened, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was, was not born. Yeah. He was not born. Yeah. And you know those people could not be giving those stories to people. Yeah. You know, those people, it was a king from Habasha, Ethiopia, uh -huh. who heard of Mecca. Mm -hmm. And he said, why do we have another center of religion and economy in this world? I'll go finish it. Mm -hmm. He decided to go with his army to Mecca. Uh -huh. When he reached uh, near Mina, an area near Mina, you know, even that place, Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people from Makkah tried to protect Kaaba, but they couldn't. <laughs> yeah. So they said, we'll run away, let the king do what he can do. Uh -huh. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to them Toiran Ababil. Toiran Ababil are birds mm -hmm. which were carrying pebbles, a very small pebble. Mm -hmm. But if that pebble touches your head, I'm told you could, you could, the entire body could burn. Subhanallah. Only a pebble. Yeah. Each one of them, only one pebble. And each bird was only assigned to one person. Mm -hmm. And that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Kaaba. Kaaba. Mm -hmm. You know, Kaaba was built by Ibrahim alayhi yeah. salam. And even some scholars say that it is Adam alayhi salam who showed where Kaaba should be. Uh -huh. That's why we also told us that uh, Adam alayhi salam descended in Mount Arafah in Makkah. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm one of historians of Makkah. When you go to Makkah Mashallah. with people, that's part of my work to Mashallah. tell people, take people al along those places. Mm -hmm. So you see now, that is one of the mojis that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did. Mm -hmm. Because people could not understand what he's saying, but how did he get this story? Uh -huh. Then one of uh, the poets of Makkah was telling him, let me now compete with you. <laughs> and then he came and said, Al-Fil, Mal-Fil, Indahu, Velun, Tawil, you know, <laughs> Elephant, what is Elephant, he has a very, very long, long tail. Trunk. And, and tra you know, those are things which could not even away Quran, al karim I think they're trying to imitate some, mm -hmm. some parts of the Quran well, where the Almighty Allah asks you, uh, he mentions something and then he asks you, what is that? Thing, and then he goes on and explains That's it. That's very true. That like really uh, <laughs> in uh, Anzanahu, we learn the Qadr. 
wama adraka ma al qadr yeah. so you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you see when you look at the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the language of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you see wisdom totally of allah subhanallah uh -huh. no. now we're going to continue with that much uh, later on the next friday inshallah yeah. it's a very exciting thing for us to discuss but now i would like to let you know all of you inshallah that we will continue with this same topic and finish it next friday inshallah but also we're not going to continue with the same thing that you've heard about but we will also talk about the eid because inshallah next week but one that's going to be within the month of june we're going to celebrate the eid we will also talk about zakat al-fitri which i don't want to translate it into english because uh non-muslims who are watching this show you will think that we're talking about the tithe but that's what it might mean to you so to make you understand we're going to talk about the tithe or zakat al-fitri who's supposed to be given the zakat al-fitri and also we're going to talk about who and at what amount is supposed to be given That's okay. and the and everything that surrounds the day of Eid, the sunnah or the voluntary acts of the day of Eid, and also the sharia governing the day of Eid, insha'Allah mm -hmm. ta'ala. My name is Abdul Razak Ngutia and I have been with Sheikh Dr. Hassan Kenyomari from the University Shabbat. of Nairobi. Thank Shabbat. you very much for coming and I hope to see you next Friday, insha'Allah. Thank you. Wa hadha salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. مع السلامة